Hello, brothers and sisters. How are you doing today? Uh, this is part 12. And we're going to be talking about part 12, the Moses Covenant. And this was another covenant that was given by God to be close to his people and his people to be close to him. This type of covenant is more about the people this time as well as, well as, no, as, well as Moses. And um, I'm going to give you a, read a brief summary of it. Okay, it says, the Moses covenant is an agreement that was made between God and his people, Israel. Because the covenant was made at Mount Sinai, it is sometimes called the Sinai covenant. And you'll find that in Exodus, Exodus 19 and 24. The Mosaic covenant was named after Moses, the man who God had chosen. To lead Israel and to, do, and to whom the first Ten Commandments of the law were given. The Mosaic Covenant was a bilateral or conditioned covenant, meaning that both parties were responsible to fulfill the duties of that covenant. The people were responsible for following the law. And in return, God promised to abundantly bless and protect Israel. So now you can see the difference in that covenant versus the unconditional covenant that Abraham had and Noah had. This is based off of performance. That's why it's called, a, I mean, a conditional covenant. And so it says the conditional covenant, conditional nature of Mosaic covenant makes it very uh, different from the Abraham covenant and the David covenant, which are unconditional. In the unconditional covenant, God's favor, God's favor is in an unconditional covenant. His favor is in an unconditional covenant. Uh, promise and blessings are based on his decision, God's decision, rather than on the actions of the people. In the Moses covenant, the blessings are lack. The blessings or lack thereof was a direct result of obedience or disobedience of the people. This is outlined in detail in Deuteronomy and 28. The whole chapter of Deuteronomy 28 talks about um, the obedience first and then it talks about um, the disobedience. If you obey God, this is what's going to happen. If you disobey God, this is what's going to happen. So it's outlined very clear. God made himself very clear on what was going to happen and what was not going to happen. So where he didn't do that with Abraham or Noah, because, like I said, they live for God. They took that relationship personal. And you'll find out here in, in, in the Moses covenant, the people did not take it serious. Oh, they said yes to him, but they still didn't take it serious. So... So 
So this is what uh, we're talking about. So we're going to go to Exodus 9, Exodus 19. And we're going to find out what uh, was going on in, the, in, 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 in Exodus 19, 1 through 9. And this here again, we're talking about a personal relationship that Moses had with God. Moses had with God. The people could not have a personal relationship with God because their mind was always somewhere else. They did not keep their mind on God. They kept it in everything else except God. So we're going to read. And, I, and, I, and again, I always read from the New Living Translation. I want to make that clear. There are several books that I use, NIV, uh, New King James, the Spirit-Filled Bible of the New King James, um, Schofield, I use Schofield, I use uh, some other Bibles too. Right now I can't think of the rest of them, but I, I, when I'm digging deep and trying to find research for certain things, I like to have those Bibles close to me and I read each one and see what each one is saying. But I found that the New Living Translation just breaks it down plain and simple. And that's why I read it to you so it can be plain and simple. I don't want nothing to be hard. I want it to be plain and simple. So if you want to read the New... I, I got a, And I got a... Um, a New Living Translation, which is a study Bible, which gives you a lot of history. And a lot of history is what you really need to understand the Word of God. Um, because everything is based off of history. So far in all my lessons, you can tell everything is based off of history. we got to go back into history and find out what these relationships was all about before we can even begin to understand what God is saying. We got to understand God. And through these covenants, I hope and pray that you un will understand what God is saying, how close God got to these people in the Bible, our ancestors, how he got so close to these people and got to know them real well. And they got to know him real well. And that's what it's all about. And then they took on his form, his likeness. That's what it's all about. Which that's what we're supposed to be doing, is taking on Christ Jesus' likeness and everything that he stands for. So it's not hard to understand the word of God. It's just what, what direction you take to understand the word of God. Because first of all, you got to go to the source who made it and created it. And find out what kind of relationship he had with the people in the Bible. And that's why I'm going to go through every relationship that God had with someone. So that you can understand who he really is. Why he is. And all you got to do is remember that there's God and Satan. And be able to, wisdom-wise, be able to separate the two. Be able to separate the two. That's what's most important. Exodus 19, 1 through 19. And, and number one says... Exactly two months after the, the Israelites left Egypt, they arrived in the wilderness in, of, of Sinai. After breaking camp, they came to the wilderness of Sinai and set up camp there at the base of the Mount Sinai. Number three. Then Moses camped the mountains, no, climbed the mountains to appear before God 
the Lord called to him from the mountain and said, Give these instructions to the families of Jacob, announcing it to the descendants of Israel. God called Moses out. He was just sitting there doing what he at the camp, and then God spoke to him and told him to come up here. He wanted to talk to him. And that's how God talks to me also. When he wants to talk to me, he says, Hell, I need to talk to you. So what I do, I get off to myself, I go to my secret closet, wherever I need to go to talk to God, that's what I do. Because God is a jealous God and he don't want nobody else around when he's talking to you. He just wants to talk to you. Just like right here with Moses. He just wants to talk to Moses. He don't want nobody else around. He wants to talk to his personal servant. His personal friend. Because that's what we are to God. Once you get to know God, you are a friend. Jesus said, I, 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 you're no more my servant, but you are my friend. You're no more my servant, but you are my friend. Because a friend, you can tell things to. A servant, you can't tell servant things. A slave, you can't tell slave things. But a friend, oh, you can confine in a friend. And this is what Jesus was trying to tell Moses, that he wanted to confide in him. I need to tell you something. And um, number four, you have seen what I did in the Egyptians, what did to the Egyptians. You know how I carry you on, on eagle wings and brought you to myself. You see, God brought Moses to himself. God did that. God was watching over Moses. And even, even, even when he had to go out there in the death, God was walking, watching over him. There are many times God has watched over you when you was in your disparity. And he still came through like a champ. So you can understand when you get alone, crying, and don't know what to do, and you call out his name. Oh, yes, he said, for my very elect's sake, I will come speedily. He's coming to see what's wrong. That's your daddy. That's your Abba, my father. I'm coming to see what's wrong, son. Mm. Mm. Number five. Now, if you will obey me and keep my covenant, you will be my own special treasure. Isn't that something? Isn't that just sweet? You will be my own. If you obey me now, you'll be my own special treasure. See, God getting personal now. God, God is getting loving now. And I mean, it just sends chills all over my body when, when I hear God talk like this. Because this is where he gets intimate. You will be my treasure. From among all the people on earth. From among all the people on earth, you will be my treasure. My pleasure. I can talk to you. I can walk, walk with you. And we can talk to each other. Just like Noah did. Just like Abraham did. Isaac, Jacob. They all did the same thing. And many other brothers and sisters in the Bible as well. Mm, and obey me and keep my covenant. Meaning don't break my vow. Don't break it. Don't break it. You will be my own. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. Uh, on earth. For all the earth beyond belongs to me. Everything belongs to God. He made it. He created it. Everything belongs to him. And you will be my king of priests. 
my holy na na nation. Moses is one that started out the kings of priests, his holy nation. His holy nation. This is the message you must give to the people of Israel. Now, I got, now you need to tell your people, this is how it's going to be. Number seven. Uh, so Moses returned from the mountain and called together the elders of the, the elders of the people and told them everything that the Lord had commanded him. You get your elders together first. Get your priesthood together first. Those ones that's going to have to keep everybody else straight. Now, I need to tell y'all first, this is how it's going to be. And that's the word. bad thing is, is when you got people uh, that's in eldership, ministership, deaconship, these are the people that's supposed to be the forerunners for the church. They must do what the pastor says. They have to. They, they are the ones that have to walk that straight and narrow. It's sad when you run, you, you're the pastor running the church and you tell people what we're going to do and then they turn around and do what they want to do. This is the problem that, that God had in the, uh, and we're going to talk about that later, but this is the problem that God had with Israel when they brought the ark to Jerusalem, you had priests that wanted to do what they wanted to do. Not what God said. God is very specific and strict on what he said. you either going to do it his way or he's going to take you out. And later on, you're going to find out how much he, he will take you out. So this is the problem that uh, God had also with the Israelites. Then it says, so Moses brought the people, people's answer, uh, back to the Lord. No, I'm sorry, number eight, number eight. And all of the people responded together. We will do everything that the Lord has commanded. Everything. People said that now. They got together, they voted on it, and whatever they had to do, and say, yep, we're going to do whatever the Lord say do. And remember now, your vow, if you make a vow to God, you can't break it. There's consequences behind making a vow to God. And you will, who was that? So, oh, I'm sorry, here we go. So Moses, Moses brought the people's answer back to the Lord. Moses took the answer back to him and told him what they said. Number nine says, Then the Lord said to Moses, I will come to you in the thick cloud, Moses. So the people themselves can hear me. So the people themselves can hear me. When I speak with them, then they will always trust you. God was more, he wasn't worried. He was more concerned about the people trusting Moses. Because after all, he brought them out of Egypt. And some of them still didn't trust him then. But he had to set the record, I mean, clear, plain and clear. This is what you got to do. And it was all for Moses, his leader. So everybody got to be on one accord. Everybody got to be on one accord. And then it says, the rest of number nine says, Moses told the Lord what the people had said. Number 10, then the Lord told Moses, go down and, and go down and prepare the people from for my arrival. Concentrate them today and tomorrow and have them wash their clothes. It's time to prepare to meet the Lord. 
Wash your clothes. Come clean. Wash your mind. Get all that sinful stuff out of your mind. Come clear. Come with an open mind and hear what the Lord has to say. Number 11. Be sure they are ready on the third day. For on the day the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai as all of the people watch. Number 12, mark off a boundary all around the mountain. Warn the people. Be careful. Do not go up on the mountain or even touch its boundaries. Anyone who touches the mountain will certainly be put to death. All you got to do is just touch. If, they, if, he, if he roped it off, you touch that rope, you dead. You step across that rope, you dead. That sounds harsh. But the thing is, it's just like in Moses in, in, in God's uh, throne room. There was only two people allowed in that throne room that protected that throne room. At that time, it was Satan and one other archangel. And they walked across back and forth protecting the presence of God. And it's only, for, it's only so far you can go up in there because you must be escorted just like the president. If you want to see the president, you got to be escorted. Number one, <clears throat> you got to write a letter to him and tell him what you want. And then he got to say yay or nay. And if he says yes, when you get there, they're going to search you. To make sure you don't have any weapons or anything that's dangerous that might hurt the president. Same thing with God. When, just like uh, Satan, when he went up to see God, he had to be escorted to the thorn room. The one that he used to work in. He had to be escorted in that thorn room. Throne room. Because he wasn't a friend of God anymore. So we don't know what you're going to do. We don't know what you're going to do. So be escorted. He see what he he saw what he wanted, and, and he asked Satan, "Where have you been?" And he said, "To and fro, seeking whom I can devour." I'm straight up. This is what I'm doing. You know, God straight up too. Have you considered my son Job? He said, "Yeah, but you got a hedge around him." See, that's that protection. When you live right, God will put a protection around you. He will send angels to protect you to keep you safe. No harm will come to you. That's what he told Abraham. So he told Isaac and Jacob, no harm will come to you. Whoever cursed you, whoever cursed you, I'll curse them. And whoever help you, I'll bless them. You see? So, we, we got a lot sitting on our side. Number 13. No hand may touch the person or animal that crosses the boundary. Instead, stone. Instead, stone them. Or short. Or, sh or shoot them. With arrows. They must be put to death. However, when the rings, the ram horn blows, sounds a long blast, then the people may go up on the mountain. He's giving all these warnings. He's talking to Moses, telling him what to do. Uh, see the importance of God talking to Moses. And telling them what to do so they don't make a mistake. 14 says, 
So Moses went down to the people, concerned, considered, con, consum, I'm sorry, consecrate them for worship, and they washed their clothes. 15, he told them, get ready for the third day, and until then, abstain from having sexual intercourse. Abstain from having sexual intercourse. Meaning, I want your mind on me. I don't need your mind to be on nothing else but me. This is what you have to do for the Lord. If you want to, if you want to meet him, this is what you got to do. Number 16, on the morning of the third day, thunder uh, uh, roared and lightning flashed and on and a dense cloud came down on the mountain. There was a long, loud blast from a ram's horn and all the people uh, trembled. 17, Moses led them out from their camp to meet with God. And they stood at the foot of the mountain. 18 says, all, all of Mount Sinai was covered with smoke because the Lord had descended on it in the form of fire. The smoke brewed into the sky like smoke from a brick kernel. And, and the whole mountain shook violently. Number 19. And the base of the ram's horn grew louder and louder. Moses spoke. And God thundered his reply. Number 20, the Lord came down on the top of the Mount Sinai and called Moses to the top of the mountain. So Moses climbed the mountain. Number 20, 20 uh, 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 one, this is where the Lord talks to Moses. We have a relationship. We have a very deep conversation right now with Moses with God. Number 23. But the Lord, Moses protested. The people cannot come up the Mount Sinai. You already warned us. You told me. See, this is where Moses protested to God of even coming up the danger that they will face. So there are times when you can, you can, even though God told you something to do, you can protest it. But just be humble about it. Don't be no fool now. Don't go up there giving God no instructions. But you can't contest it. Mark off the boundaries all around the mountain to sit. It apart as holy. See, this is what was so important. Just like Moses, God told Moses the first time, take off your sandal because you're standing on holy ground. Anytime God comes down, his presence is around. That's why the boundary was there because that ground became holy. Anything God touches is holy. That's why it's so important that we obey God. And then uh, again, but the Lord said, go down and bring Aaron back up with you. In the meantime, do not let a priest, let the priest or the people break through to approach the Lord. Or he will break out and destroy them. It's very, very important. Cannot touch what's holy. You cannot touch what's holy and live. You just can't do it. In that day, you could not do that. When God's presence was there, just like going into the uh, 
where the ark was. And you got through one curtain, but the priests were there to go in to the ark. Nobody else could do that. They could not do that. It was only the priests, the Levite priests. And they were the only ones that could go into the presence of God. Nobody else. Nobody else. Nobody else. So, uh, number 25 says, So Moses went down to the people and told them what the Lord had said. Told them what the Lord had said. And what I'm going to do. When you go to. Uh, chapter 28 of Deuteronomy. Like I said. Read that whole chapter. That is a beautiful chapter. It tells you about the uh, obedience part, and it tells you about the disobedience part. I don't know if I should split this up or not. Hmm. Come on, let's think about this. Let's think about this. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to split this up and make another part. And then we'll finish this out. But I still got quite, quite, a, quite a bit to go. So, now you see the difference between a unconditional covenant and a covenant, a condition, a conditional covenant. Your conditional covenants is in, 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 is in is is bound in laws and rules and regulations, which are un unconditional covenant isn't it? Isn't. So this is what the people had to live with. They had to live with a covenant that was conditional. If you broke the law, then certain punishments would come upon you. And. I just have to tell you, God just doesn't play. It's either be holy or not. You got to be one or the other. And I think you know that, my sisters and brothers, even the unbelievers, I think you know that also too. So don't think you can pull the wool over God's eyes because you can't. He sees all. Hears all, knows all. There's no one in this Bible that got away with doing wrong. No one. If Satan didn't get away with it, you're not going to get away with it. If you're still doing the same sin, you will be judged. You will be judged. So live right no matter what. And in the next part 13, we're going to finish this out and tell you what the consequences are as far as being obedient and disobedient. What happens? Okay? So, God bless you, my sisters and brothers. I thank you for taking out the time to listen to God's word. Because truly it comes from God, not from me. This is all God. This is not me. And I just want to thank you. And I ask God for always to give you understanding. Always. Because you need that understanding. You need for your mind to be opened up. In a simple way. A, a, a humble way. Meek way. To where you can understand the word of God. And he will teach you these things. He taught me. Sure, I went to church. I kept going to church. But it was that, it was that, it was that side line workout that, that, that really did it. I couldn't get enough from the pastor. When I was growing up and coming up until now. 
I had to get out on my own and work out my own self in the word, in fasting and praying. A lot of fasting, a lot. But it all paid off. When people was out there having fun, I was in the word of God. I was fasting. And I didn't go out to do foolish stuff. I was sealed with the Holy Spirit to do what was right. And that's what you got to do. And so I'm asking you if you will take on the spirit of the word and go with it. In Jesus' name, I pray this to be so. And again, my brothers and sisters, until we meet again, God bless you and I love you. Amen.